In today's video, I'm going to talk about the Cadillac 472-500 oiling system. Now, when we start talking about the oiling system, I'm going to start at the very bottom. And that'd be the pickup tube. And the reason I'm going to bring up the pickup tube, seems like a simple device, is if your rear sump, Eldorado pan, this is an Eldorado pickup, um, it's long. You know, the pump's front mounted, the, the pan has got a deep sump, it's rear mounted sump. Um, that's a long ways to pick up. So, for the most part, this works okay. The worry you have is a couple fold. One is there's an O-ring up here that seals this to the block. And you need to make sure that that O-ring is on there and good and you didn't roll it or do anything that went up nice and neat because that's your seal. And you also need to make sure that this plate is flat and bolts down tight. I mean, this doesn't bolt real heavy. I think it's like 18 foot pounds. Um, it's not a lot of force. So the reason you got to make sure is this, all this line here is above the oil level. So if you have a leak here, you don't leak oil. What you do is you suck air into the oiling system. And when you aerate the oil that way, when you get all these little air bubbles from the pump pulling on this leak, um, the little bubbles collapse in the oil at the bearing and it acts like you have no oil. And so it'll wipe out bearings in a heartbeat. So you really need to make sure that this seal's okay, that it's the right size. Remember, 68, 69 has a smaller tube. So if that's the pan and pickup you have, but it's a later model block, you're going to have to do something because the tube is smaller and it's not going to seal. If you're going the other way, if you have a 68, 69 motor, but your pan that you picked up is later then the tube's going to be too big and it's not going to fit in the block and you're either going to have to change to a different pickup tube or you're going to have to machine the block so that you have room for the bigger tube so that's one thing to think about if you make your own pickup tube should you cut this and splice it together you need to make sure that any of this that's above the oil. I mean, you're not as worried about down here where the screen is, but any of this that's above the oil line needs to be leak free. And you can either pressure test it, you know, put air in at this end and, and try and hold a plastic bag and a rag or something at this end as best you can. Spray a little bit of uh, uh, Windex or something on it, soap with uh, something that makes bubbles and uh, Look for bubbles. Make sure there are no pinholes in this pickup tube. I, I have lost two motors to a pickup that I made that looked perfectly fine. And I came to find out there was just a pinhole leak and it was aerating the oil. So that can happen there. It can happen up here. But that's the pickup tube and that bolts up into the block. Now, once you get past the pickup tube, you're into the oil pump. Now we've already talked about the oil pump a little bit and there's a whole video on oil pumps and how they're all the same size. There is no high volume pump and how you can port it and get a little more volume out of it, uh, which is the gold pump that that CAD company sells is a ported pump so that you have a little higher volume out of it. Now this pump that I put on this motor is a G pump. And I did that because it fits the chassis correctly. Now, when I bought this pump, I bought it used from somebody. Um, they never actually ran it, but I cleaned it up and I didn't see anything major different. But when I ran it with a pre-lube drill, I got 65 pounds of pressure out of it. So they obviously have swapped out the spring because stock pressure is 40 PSI. Now, I follow the 10 PSI per 1,000 RPM. And this is basically a 5,000 RPM motor. So we only need 
50 pounds of pressure. And I'm sure you're saying to yourself, well, you know, 65, what's it going to hurt? It can hurt some. The, the big worry with too much oil pressure, especially on a basic motor like this, where I haven't even had it apart, we're not sure about the age, is the cup plugs. Now, on the oil crossover, which is the passage that goes from this oil galley on this side to this oil galley on this side, there's a little crossover passage. And on the front of the two oil galley uh, passages, you have cup plugs. They're not screw-in plugs, they're cup plugs. And these just press in. And if you get too much oil pressure going, you can just push the plug right out. It's hydraulic pressure behind it. So if it's not in there super tight, it may just push its way out. And that's one worry. That's part of the reason on a motor like this, I don't really like to push the oil pressure too hard. Um, giving it just a little bit, I mean, I'm only adding 10 pounds, is uh, enough just to hedge my bet a bit. But not enough to really create a problem with the cup plugs. Now, if you're building a motor, and even if it's stocker, I usually recommend you stake in the cup plugs. And that's where you take like a little dull chisel and you knock a bit of the cast down to where it kind of binds the cup plug a little bit on the top edge after the cup plug's in. Uh, you can look up stinking cup plugs. I'm sure somebody has a video. But that just ensures that they don't push out quite so easy. The other thing sometimes I do, because I'm not as thrilled about today's cup plugs. They're not always well-made, well-sized. So sometimes they're a, loose, a bit of a loose fit. Is you can take a ball peen hammer to the inside of the cup, and sometimes I'll just put a piece of tape on it, and I'll tap it on the little flat part of a bench vise in order to just spread this a few thousandths of an inch so that it's a little tighter fit. Now, I'm not smashing it. I'm just barely spreading it. Sometimes I even mic them to see how I've done, just to make sure they're a nice tight fit and stay put when they're in there. Now, if you're going to go up in oil pressure, if you're building a, you know, race motor, you know, 7,000 RPM motor, then you probably want to convert to screw in uh, plugs, regular pipe plugs, instead of cup plugs. Now, there's a couple of drawbacks if you do that. The first is this little crossover passage is not the most rugged thing. So when you go to drill that passage, because you wind up having to, to drill it and then tap it in order for the plugs to fit. When you do that, you need to be very careful. You don't want to bust off that crossover passage and then have to try and figure out how to fix it if you can or find another block. So when you do that, be very gentle. The other is, like I said, there's two cup plugs in the front. Now, if you convert those to thread-in plugs, the one on the passenger side is not too hard to do. But the one on the driver's side, right behind the cup plug, is the passage that goes down to feed the first main bearing. And so if you put that plug in too deep and uh, sink it in down into that passage, you're going to block the oil going to the front main and then wonder why you're having trouble at the front main. So don't do that. Now, on some blocks, it's not too bad, but you want to run a fairly shallow cup plug, or not cup plug, a threaded pipe plug, but one of the thinner ones, not a real thick one. And I have had to shave the back of them just a bit sometimes. And on one block, I had to take a little Dremel and carve a passage because they had drilled it so close to the front, even the cup plug almost blocked it. And so I had to kind of make a little passage to go back. So that's one spot to really look at if you're converting it, and even when you go to put in the cup plug, that that spot looks okay. So that feeds the front main. You don't want to suddenly have trouble with the front main. Now, once you've decided on your oil pressure, and you get it shimmed up. Now, like I said, this 
This one is 65 pounds. So I'm guessing there's a big block Chevy spring in there. Now you can buy springs for big block Chevy um, that will fit into the Cadillac pump and give you a different pressure. This is 75 PSI and this one is 65 PSI. Now normally 65 is green but when I cleaned up the pump I saw nothing on the spring. I wasn't quite sure. That's part of the reason I really made sure when I pre-lubed to, to see what my pressure was. So since that's too high I'm going to just take a stock spring, which I took this out of another pump, and a few shims. These are just washers. And I'm going to put it behind. There's a little pipe plug that holds the plunger into a, uh, the spring and plunger assembly in for the bypass. And I'm just going to shim between the plug and the spring. I'm not quite sure. Two or three washers to bring my pressure up just a little bit to where I want with the stock spring. So I recommend you do that on the stand here, pre-lube it, test it. Now pre-lubing it will show you your maximum pressure. And that's all this spring does. That's just maximum pressure. So you can set it. Part of the reason is this plug is almost against the um, motor mount. So it's going to be really hard to get to. Why they didn't turn it around or figure out a different way and get it out here where you could get to it easy, I don't know. But it's pointed basically right at the motor mount. And so it's easier to do when you're on the stand, uh, getting the motor ready. If you need to open it up a couple of times and change the shims, you can do that. So I recommend you do that. And that'll set your maximum pressure. Now remember, that doesn't set pressure at idle. Pressure at idle is controlled by how much the motor is using in oil. Because remember, there's a certain amount that passes through the motor all the time. If the clearance is high, if the lifters are, are bleeding off a lot, then you can use up more oil than the pump is actually moving. And that'll drop the oil pressure. Now, the only way you can really fix that is either to figure out how to tighten up the clearances, rebuild the motor, or run maybe just a slightly higher idle speed if it's idled way down to where the pump's just not moving fast enough or go to a thicker oil. And, and I prefer, I mean, this this motor is old. It's never been a part. I haven't even looked at the bearings. Um, on this thing, I've got 2050 in it. Now, I know a lot of guys feel like that's too heavy. And I live in an environment that's pretty dry and uh, warm. So I don't have a lot of problems. And this car's not going out in the snow, believe me. So um, 2050 is going to work just fine in this particular motor. Now you may have to run a slightly lighter oil. But these motors are not designed for a really light, like zero weight oil. Um, the, the thickness of the oil is really based on how much clearance is in the motor. A as you decrease the clearance, then you can run a thinner and thinner oil. But when these were made, tolerances weren't real great. And so the journals may be off a few ten thousandths here or there, and they may not even be completely round. I mean, they may be a few ten thousandths out of round. I mean, Cadillac did a nice job for the most part of machining, but it doesn't mean it's flawless. And in a lot of race motors where you're running the zero weight, the very low oils. I mean, the machinist is making everything just perfect. It's perfectly round. It's got no taper. It's exactly the size it needs to be. You know, everything is just perfect, perfect, perfect. So you can set that clearance. When things aren't perfect, you need a little bit of give in the clearance so that it's not sweeping the oil off of the bearing because if you're down at, at you know just a thousandth of clearance, half a thousandth aside, and the, the journal is two tenths out around, well, that doesn't sound like a lot, but that's enough to start wiping the bearing out of the way, and you're basically trying to run with no oil. So, you know, I, it, it's, it's an early motor.
And so you got to go by the early standards. I mean, technically the motor was designed for straight weight 30. That was what it was back in the day when it was designed. And so you can pick something appropriate. Now, you don't, 2050 may be a little heavy for you. You may have to go down to, you know, a 15 weight or a, you know, a, a 1040 or something, depending on how cold it is. But you want some protection. That oil is going to help protect the bearings. So once you get your oil pressure figured out, which is based, like I said, on clearance and whatnot, um, the next question is, is there anything else you can do to improve the motor? Now, like I said, there, there is no high volume pump. And the Cadillac has two galleys. And off of those galleys, you alternately, I mean, like the front main and the rear main are fed off of this side. And the other mains are fed off of the other side. You, you have lifters and you have main feeds going down to the main bearings off of these two galleys. Now, one of the benefits of the Chevy motor way back when, when it was made, is it had a central galley that fed the mains. That was called main oiling, and that, that improved the oiling going down to the bottom end. Now, the Cadillac doesn't have that, but you're also not going to that many RPM. I mean, a small block may be going to, you know, 8,000 RPM these days. On this, you're probably only going to 5,000 RPM. So the oiling system really is not as bad as people think. But they try and improve it. And one of the improvements is there's a passage right here. Now, when they drill the motor out for oil to go up, there's a passage from the, the pump that comes up this way and then they have to drill a cross passage, and that's what this plug is. That's where they drilled the hole, so they plugged the end of the, the passage up to the main gallery. And, and this gallery that goes all the way to the back then crosses over, and you have another one back here, and the oil pressure comes off of the rear on this side. Now, that's done on purpose because that's the furthest point in the system. So that gives you your first warning that oil pressure has got a problem. Um, you may see a slight difference in pressure from there to here. Um, I have run gauges at both, and there can be some subtle fluctuations where that pressure drops a little bit, and it doesn't necessarily happen here. But for the most part, if you're going to have a problem, you're going to see it on that spot first. So that's where you want the gauge. Now, guys, I'll take this plug out and run a line around to the back of the block and try and feed the back of the block. And there's some things in the Cadillac 472 500 2.0 Facebook group, which is more about performance, about doing that. Now, I've never felt like it gained you a whole lot because the real restriction in the system is down here in the pump. And Larry proved that years ago. That's part of what the gold pump that's ported out. The gears are plenty big enough to move the oil. The real problem is trying to get the oil moved through the passage. And when you're pulling this plug here, you still have this restriction here that's not changing how much oil you're moving. So I never felt like that really was going to help a lot. Now I've never actually tried it, but I also haven't had a need. I've pushed these motors pretty hard and I've not had a lot of trouble. I had some trouble with aerated oil, but um, that was the pickup tube. The, the rest of the oiling system, for the most part, if everything's in tolerance and it's working okay, it does just fine. Now, in this thought, I came up with this pump, which I'm going to run on that other motor over there. Um, this one we're just going to make run. But on this one, what I did was I increased, this is 22 millimeter, or LS uh, thread-on filter. That increases the size and the flow through this part of the, the oil pump. Now, the reason I did that is I added a fitting here off of that. So with the increased flow going through the filter, I can then come off of the pump and go around to the back of the block and maybe actually increase the amount of oil 
I have available. But I haven't tried this. That's why I'm building the other motor, is to test some of these ideas. Um, like I said, I also really, it may be a hard thing for me to test because I don't tend to have a lot of trouble with the regular oiling system. So that is one thought if you are able to get stuff machined and do some special items to actually feed the back of the block. Now, for the most part, the, the demand is where people start questioning what needs to happen. The tolerance on bearings in a Cadillac are anywhere from half a thousandths to four thousandths. That's a big range. Now, I typically try and run what's called split, or about two and a half. Now, that usually gives you an acceptable range, enough clearance that you don't have a lot of problems, and yet not so much that it's using a bunch of oil. So that seems to be the happy spot on any of these motors that I try and build. Um, I have no idea what this particular motor is. I mean, it had good oil pressure when we ran it. It was 40 PSI. It was doing just fine, hot, cold, whatever. So I, I'm not too worried about this one, but I haven't even looked at the bearings on this one. So if you're setting the bearings, I wouldn't go too tight. I also, like I said, I run a little thicker oil, which I find helps and protects the bearings a little bit better. I am not a big fan of super thin oils on a early style motor like this. Now on, you can't see it, but on like the LS sitting over there, well, yeah, you gotta run a thin oil. That's a modern motor, has a tight clearance. But don't get caught up and thinking that, oh my God, I'm gonna make lots of extra horsepower if I run a thin oil. It's a few here and there. It's not enough to risk the motor. And I try and pick my oil by what the clearance is in the motor. If I was to tighten up the clearance in this motor and try and run it down at more like two or just under, then yeah, I'd probably run a thinner oil. I'm not sure why I would do that, but there are guys out there that have had good luck. They prefer it. It doesn't use so much oil, so the volume that they need isn't as high, and they feel like the thinner oil moves around a little better. If that's your thinking, then fine. But it's not necessarily how it has to go. Um, I tend to try and stick to more how the motor is, a decent weight of oil, and uh, a regular split clearance. And I don't really vary from that. Whether it's super high output or a dead stalker, I stick pretty much to that same thinking no matter what. So once you get going, the question is, is everything going to get oiled properly with RPM? If you're going to start pushing it harder, one of the things that crops up is that the cam bearings can sometimes have trouble. And that's a couple of things going on. One, you got to be really careful about how the cam bearings go in a caddy. Um, you need to make sure the cam goes in, turns nice and smooth, doesn't bind up. Um, sometimes the, the bore where the camshaft is is not always the straightest thing. I haven't had a lot of trouble with that. But the other problem that comes up, which is more RPM and uh, rocker spring related, is that on the oiling system, the oil goes from these galleys down to the main, and then it comes over in the bearing. You know, there's two holes in the saddle of the block. And the oil coming to the main comes out of one of the holes. And then it just runs through this little groove and goes back up the other hole and up to the camshaft. And that feeds the camshaft on the bottom of the camshaft. Now, if you think about it, all the spring pressure, all the pushing down is pushing that camshaft right down on top of that oil hole. So it's hard for it to make a film of oil that stays well on the cam journal. And so 
if you're running a lot more spring pressure, if should ever forbid something's binding up in here, which I hope you did your homework and that's not happening. But all that is pushing down. So CAD company makes a special bearing that has a groove on the back of the bearing and moves the oil hole up to where it can spread in and get a better film of oil around the journal on the camshaft. And that's not a bad idea. Um, I have pulled some bearings out. I haven't completely wiped them, but they did not look really good on a stocker one when I was pushing one of these hard. So that's probably one of the first things you need to consider if you're really going to start pushing the motor a little harder is to try and increase the oil to the camshaft. Now, the other thing that happens is people start worrying about the rods. And... Of course, the, the rods are oiled from the mains. So the oil, and that's unlike any motor, the oil comes down to the main journal, and then it goes up the passage in the crankshaft to feed the rod journal. Now, the thing I want to point out is all of that, along with the camshaft, is done around this little itty bitty groove in the, in the main bearing. So... You've got a lot getting oiled that's controlled by this little passage. Now, what I'm going to do on that motor, and I've given this a lot of thought over the years. I haven't tried it yet. But I've cut out from this hole to this hole in the barrack. Now, guys have gone in the block in the past where I've read and cut with like a Dremel a little better passage from one hole to the other. Now the idea of that, and it doesn't have to be real big, is that takes the oil that used to go up to the camshaft and moves it down below the bearing. That means everything in this groove can go up to the connecting rod. Well, my thinking is if this is cut out, see, as the, as the connecting rod's going around, uh, as the crankshaft is going around. This only lines up with the connecting rod passage every now and then. That's the main feed hole. That's why there's a groove all the way around to kind of feed it a little bit all the time. But you wind up with a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a, big, a bit of a, a pulse, and then a little bit. So by cutting this out, I'm going to increase the amount of oil going to the rod. And I think this is a good idea. Now, technically, the amount of oil used should really be controlled by the clearance on the main to the crankshaft and on the rod bearing to the crankshaft. That really controls how much the oil flows, not this passage. Now, if there is a little bit too much, you may starve one thing or another, but I can't possibly see where this little passage would hurt. And this was done on other motors decades ago. Um, on a lot of race motors, Fords, the, you, you had what was called slotted main bearings that did that on purpose. It's not something I just made up. It's something that was done a long time ago to help a lot of the early motors. I'm just applying it to the Cadillac, and I haven't really seen anybody that's done it. If it's Something you've done before and had luck with, put it in the comments because I'd kind of like to know. But it looks to me like a good idea, and it wasn't real hard to modify the bearing in order to increase the amount of oil. And that should increase the oil to the camshaft and the rod bearings, and I should be okay. So that's another modification that you can kind of think about. And that's really all there is to the oiling system in these, these motors. Now, they don't always oil real well up here to the rocker arms, but that's more about the lifters. And I did have one motor years ago that was solid, flat top it, and I wasn't, I was running uh, adjustable rockers, expensive rockers, and I wasn't real thrilled with how much oil was getting to the rocker. I was mostly worried about the rocker. And in that one, I actually went in to each lifter which was a huge pain, 
and very delicate work. And I actually modified the lifter inside to increase the oil flow up to the rocker arm just a little bit. And that helped. I, I suddenly wound up with like a, a little drip on every cycle and, and it, it worked really well. It was very delicate work. So, you know, don't be opening up lifters if, if that's not something you're comfortable with. Um, but it is something to, to know. And in general, you need to make sure that the push rods are all clear, that the oil passage is clear, that all the oil holes line up. Because, I mean, we use different rockers in these particular motors uh, than stock. And sometimes if you're set up a certain way, oil holes may not quite line up to where the rocker oils. And that's all something you need to look at when you're putting the motor together to make sure it all looks okay. And, and that should help your upper end oil. Now, like I said, you, you're never going to have just tons of oil up here. It, it'd be very uncommon if you did. Um, but that is not uncommon for the caddy to be a little light on oil. Uh, but you do need to make sure there's oil. I mean, if you even run the stock ones dry, they're going to fail on you. So you do need to look for oil here and try and figure out. Now, a lot of times that comes out to more clearance on the lifter to the lifter bore than it is about anything up here. And that's one of the reasons I prefer to make sure that the lifter fits in snug, but of course it has to spin. So it's a very fine line when you're putting the lifter in. You don't want it sloppy. You don't want to hone these lifter bores out to where they have a bunch of extra clearance because that'll lose the oil. You, you want to make sure they're a nice snug fit but move freely. And, and that ensures that everything rotates, that the cam lives because the lifter's rotating like it should, and that should ensure you get oil up to the top. Um, for those that remember when I first fired this motor, I I had lots of oil coming up to the top of this. I got oil on me. I had more oil running off of the motor. I didn't have the valve covers on it. I mean, it, it made a real mess in minutes. And, and technically, that should be how it is. It's just a lot of times that doesn't happen as fast on a caddy. This one was, was definitely doing good. So that's the basic oiling system and some mods that you can do to to try and improve it. Like I said, there isn't a whole lot to do. Um, a lot of times it's more of a, a balancing act between clearance and oil thickness. Um, but um, that's the oil system in a nutshell. And that's kind of how I run it. And I haven't had a lot of problems. I mean, the only real big problem I can remember was pickup tube killing bearings twice in a motor before I realized there was a pinhole. And so try and uh, avoid that particular issue. Um, other than that, I uh, wish you luck in your projects. And this was the Cadillac oiling system. And if you haven't seen it, there is a video on the oil pumps itself and the differences in what pumps we can get. And other than that, have fun. Talk to you later.